Coach, before we get going, can you share with us uh, some sad news in regards to a Dutchman basketball family? Yeah, so Preston and uh, Trayton came and his mom uh, passed away unexpectedly on Sunday. Um, so just uh, unexpected death, uh, 51 years old, former Melrose grad, 1989. So hearts and uh, prayers go to uh, their family um, and Cam Atkinson, uh, his mom was, a, was her sister, uh, so was a former player there as well. Uh, so, yeah, our, our thoughts and prayers go to their family. It's just a, it's a very, very sad deal. Oh, it is. I recall talking to her when Melrose played at Osakis that night, and she came up to me, and she was all fired up. She says, oh. you remember who I am? And I said, actually, I do. She says, those are my two boys out there, and she was so proud of that. So proud, and she's just a super fan and cooking for all the boys all the time and stuff like that. So uh, we feel we feel very sad for her and uh, her family, and um, it's, it's, a, it's a sad situation. Also, too, uh, with Larry Ossendorf, uh, what's the word on him? Yeah, so Larry had uh, was in the hospital for about a week or something like that. He's at home now, and he's feeling better, uh, and he's going to have to have uh, some type of bypass uh, heart surgery here. So he'll be, as, as he says, out for the year <laughs> uh, with that, but he's feeling a lot better than where he was uh, a, a, a few weeks ago over Christmas break. Uh, so, yeah, it was pretty scary. He had called 911 and collapsed, and, uh, and the, the medics revived him and got him going, and, and then he had, you know, he had COVID and pneumonia and flu and all that. So once that clears out of his system, then uh, he'll, have his, uh, he'll have his surgery, and then uh, he'll be back on the golf course before he knows it. Mm. Yeah, we need him back, don't we? We do. We do. We don't know what to do without him. <laughs> it's been kind of weird. Yeah. All right, so the team now, uh, let's see, you've played uh, – a third of the schedule in the regular season. Can you take us back from the, the first game and maybe highlight some of the players and talk about uh, how has this team kind of, uh, they're finding some good ground out there now. Yeah, they are. They, you know, I think the big thing is we rely on our, our three captains, as, as we always do. But, you know, Gore Rui, Connor Engelmeyer, and Devin Orbeck, we rely on them for a lot. And I think um, those guys have shown their experience and shown their leadership you know, and then Connor Anderson and Hunter Goyle, those guys played minutes last year, and that, that experience shows as well. And so um, we really have relied on those uh, on those five, along with our guys off the bench, too, that have done a nice job. Isaac Rosenberger has done a nice job, and Sam and Max Waylog, and Ian Funk has played well, and Fernando, and he's gotten his chance as well. So, you know, but really we play through those three captains a lot, uh, and, and they all are different players, and, and um, so they've done a, a nice job and led in their own way. They're all showing the ability to score right now, too, aren't they? They are, you know, and, you know, from a guy like Devin, any type of scoring that he gets is great, but he can put the ball on the floor just because he's an athlete. And same thing with Gore. We know he can score on Ronnie. And, you know, Connor Anderson has really stepped up uh, as well. And so it's no secret we're not the greatest offensive team in the world. But all of a sudden those guys chip in, and Hunter Goyle shoots a very high percentage from the floor. So when he shoots the ball, we're pretty confident goes in, and Isaac Rogen, Rosenberg can score. So all of a sudden now, you know, you got six guys here that can, that can put the ball on the floor, and that's the name of the game. I do want to highlight Connor Anderson and go back to last Friday. Down at Montevideo was a close game in the first half until he had that series with about a minute where he made three baskets and Melrose got the lead, but it was showing what Connor Anderson can do. Absolutely. He was shooting with confidence, you know, and, and he can he can do that. And with so much attention with, with Gore and, and uh, Ronnie that he's going to be open and he's got confidence and our guys like it and uh, our guys have confidence in him. So it's pretty neat that, you know, the ball starts to go in and then all of a sudden – Go to the basket a little bit more, right? Because they're they're playing out on you. So he's he's really stepped up his offensive game, and we're going to need that as a, as kind of another option on the floor. I mean, call it a third option or whatever you will. We're going to need that. You know, when I look at Devin Orbeck and just knowing him personally, he likes to talk, right? <laughs> so you know, he's the quarterback on the football team. He's the pitcher on the baseball team. He's the point guard on the basketball yeah. team for the most part. Yeah. You're expecting a lot out of him, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I mean, he, he's a chatterbox. He's he's talking, but it's good because. You know, you need guys like that, and you know it takes no talent to communicate. And he's always talking, he's always going, he's always making sure guys are in the right spot, and he's just he's very comfortable with that. And he's learned over the years how to talk to his teammates, and that's just kind of that mature piece that we've talked about all year. And um, he's he's playing at a very high level right now. Even though Hunter Goyle had just the one basket tonight, but don't discount as you. As you look at him, he's left-handed, he's strong. Let me take you back when, remember when he was a freshman, his skills were, really weren't there, but he will knock you around. Absolutely, he gives it brings but, a little bit of physicality. Yeah. And, you know, and he shoots 60 to 70% from the floor, and he takes good shots. So, and he kind of is, is kind of nifty in there and slithering. He's good up, uh, you know, using the backboard. So that, that physicality and, I think, you know, setting screens and being physical and all those things wear, wears down the defense. So he's done a really good job with his role all year. 
I always get a kick out of watching Gore Rui because, uh, you know, he's got a lot of skills out there. He can do a lot. He's just an intriguing guy at 6'8". He can shoot the three. He can handle the ball. He can pass. He's been really good this year at finding angles and using the backboard. Um, and he's just such a good decision maker. You know, when he's got the ball, you just feel very, very confident with him um, having the basketball. So that's that's been fun to, to see his maturation. As we talk about then the Melrose offense and other guys scoring, it really kind of starts with Ronnie Engelmeyer, doesn't it? That, uh, yep. You know, other teams are going after him. Somebody's open. Right. And, you know, and tonight they did a little boxing one against him, and we were, we've were we been preparing for that because we know the teams are going to do that. And so, and he's been, he's been very good at, at scoring at all levels. And he's just, you know, you have a guy like that, and the defense just always has to know where he is, and that just opens up some of those other lanes for others. All right, just to kind of wrap it up here, uh, I saw last night good game down at Albany. Albany finally got a home game, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> so they played Pequot Lakes. Pequot leads by five at half. Albany wins by 20. What is making Albany so good? Well, we, you know, we, it's weird because we were supposed to play him before Christmas, and now we play him, you know, twice in in like nine days um, in, in February. So we really haven't watched a ton of them, but we know them so well. They're just so athletic. They're so deep. They can beat you in many ways. And I think maybe more than than past years, they have this spurtability factor that they maybe haven't had as much in years past. Where boy, it can be a, a tight game, and it can be down by fifteen in a hurry. Um, and so they just can beat you in so many different ways, and they kind of wear you down. Um, you know, they're, they're I, I think, head and shoulders being behind uh, in front of anybody in the section. Also, too, Coach, just personally, congratulations on over 400 wins now. Yeah, thank you very much. It surprised me with that thing tonight. So mm-hmm. uh, and it was pretty cool to see my uh, my three kids running out there and, you know, and get a little choked up. But uh, it's, um, yeah, it's. But, you know, let me say this, though, too, and you can address this as well. You've got great assistant coaches, don't you? Absolutely phenomenal. You know, and, and that consistency, I think, speaks a lot to our program, and they do so much to be able to prepare that, that goes into it. It's not just these guys. It's our junior high coaches as well and the travel team parents and program and all of that um, because by the time they get to varsity, there's so much basketball that they would have had to have played and known, um, and, and our assistants do a – uh, do a tremendous job and so it's yes it's kind of my name attached but we uh, those guys know and everybody knows that it's it's really it's just a team and community uh number we should mention them by name though <laughs> okay yeah that? right yeah so sean mayor has been with us for for a long time he's jv slash assistant varsity and then ryan Masho b squad coach and josh meyer so josh is the ninth grade coach so josh and ryan played for me um and, and then sean is the Melrose grad as well